Welcome everyone to our second episode of the Extra Stitch. Today we're gonna dive in into Ginta's childhood and how Ginta ended up in New York and how she got into modeling industry and you know became really really famous. So yeah, Ginta, tell us a little bit about yourself. About myself. Well, I was born in Latvia, a small city called Eiskraukla. I know it's very hard even to pronounce it. And <laughs> I know. It's a small city, basically hour and a half away from Riga. And my childhood was pretty good, you know, simple childhood, middle class family, uh, lots of summers I spent at my grandma's house. And she was living so close to us, but she had a house. So like summers I was doing all the all the work around the house. She had fields. So and... grandma kind of helped your mom raise you? Yes. Okay. So after you know when summer started we would just she would drive us to grandma's house and she's like okay have just fun. drop you off for yes. three months everyone did that in that exactly. part of the world i feel like that's how a lot of kids grew up there was no nannies right ginta no nannies nope. just no grandma. nannies you know it was great it's like <laughs> family would always help you out so right I think that was the beauty of it because everyone always would be around to help like aunts uncles whatever and um, yeah, so that was my childhood pretty much. And then around age five, uh, my dad passed away, Sorry. which is unfortunate. Yeah, and it kind of turned our lives upside down. And my mom was left alone with two kids, me and my brother, who's five years younger. So he was a newborn. Oh, no. And it was very, very tough times. It's actually my earliest memories. I remember starting around that time. I feel like I just kind of erased a lot of memory before that which is very interesting and you kind of didn't have any feelings yet right when your dad passed you didn't understand right it hit me hard mm. I remember that day when they told me um he died in a accident motorcycle accident Four. and um it was very very rough because everyone it just came as a shock you know um and um yeah it was you know and then my mom just survival mood start was on like she had to figure out how to provide for the family so I kind of became her like right hand man and I was right. helping out a lot with my younger brother and you were five at that and I was five at that time wow. when that happened yes wow. but then a couple years later our stepdad came in our world and he's amazing and they're still together and you know he's such a nice person and so he was a blessing to you he was a blessing to our family for sure and he loves my mom so much like he even to this day every i forgot what day i think 17th they met i don't know which month but every month on 17 he gives her flowers or even at one flower, like whatever, but I every cry. month. <laughs> yes, it's so, so sweet. Like, very romantic guy. So I'm very happy for my mom. Yeah, you I know? know. Having two little kids and meeting someone and, and like, a man actually taking on two little kids, it means they mm -hmm. really lo love a woman. Because yes. that's, like, that's a lot. Don't cry, Mary. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so emotional. Aww. I think, like, after I became a mom, something happened oh, to me. I know. Just, like, and I I'm can't. just going to cry because I saw you crying. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's tough, you know? Like, yeah. you, have, you have similar, you know, not similar, a little bit different story, but you know how it is, right. too, you know, when you don't have one parent. And it's very tough on, on, on family, on mom. And, and then you see your mom as this strong woman, right? right? Because right. you see her raise up from, like, such hard, difficult times right. and... Yeah, so, you know, my mom started uh, going in university, finding job, and, like, so she was busy with her own stuff, and um, I was just, you know, in school, and when I was 15, I I was like, you know what, I loved art, I loved design, and okay. I was like, I'm going to become an interior designer, and I have to change school, so I can't stay in my town, I got to go to Riga, and uh, I applied for this very good uh, design school, 
so it's like high school with already like with a with a way of paving to become interior designer which interior is interior like, designer that's cool yeah wow yeah i didn't know that and so uh, my my subject was glass design. So I, c- I can make stained glass, you know. And um, That's amazing. I know. It's pretty <laughs> crazy. A lot <laughs> of people get, don't you, notice. You can make all me. the vases and stuff for your Yes. Oh, yeah. It's cool. It's actually a lot of fun. It's, yeah. uh, it's a hard work because it's you need, like, strong hands for that, right. you know. It's but it's kind of therapeutic, right? Very. Right. Very. Mm-hmm. I love that stuff. So I really wanted to get in this uh, design school, and I started going every weekend to Riga to um, uh, do classes because you have to do an exam to get in there. It's, it's not that easy to get in. And so on weekends, I would take a train, go to Riga and, uh, and, and do this for some time until one day, it was spring, um, this guy came up to me on the street creepy. and he was creepy. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Cause he was a little bit older than me. Mm-hmm. I can't remember how much older than me he is, but not too old <laughs> too, you know, that would be like maybe even more creepy, yeah. but kind of close to age, but I was, I was like, for sure, he's like older. And, you know, I was 15 at that time and he came up to me and he's like, hi, I just wanted to ask you, are you a model? And um, I said, no, I'm not a model. He's like, would you want to try? I'm like, no, I don't want to try. Like my goal is my school. Like, right. <laughs> I'm not modeling. Right. And, you know, keep in mind, I was like, what, 16, 17 years ago. Yeah, um, that was that wasn't like that popular. That like the whole model inflate like there was nothing like no. that. No, it's barely internet, like, right? And you feel like like knowing like all our like friends kind of stories. You always feel like oh, all yeah. the famous models like never actually wanted to be a model. Like I never wanted to be a model. You mm-hmm. seems like you never wanted to be a model. No. Like, I had I no idea what that means. Right, you know. Right. Right. Because it's not something like now it's you have internet phone, you see right, all you like, like you kind of have idea about it. Right. But when you don't have access to you don't have, have phone, maybe I had some kind of phone at that time, but yeah. not like with internet or anything like that. We had Nokia. Right? Yes. Right. With the snake game. Right. You know? Oh my God, it was fun. Oh my God. Ding, 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 that was ding, ding. it. That was why you need internet. You <laughs> that just was play the, the snake. That was the time. So yes. Yeah, very therapeutic. Yeah, totally. And so I kind of, I was very skeptical. I was like, what does this guy want from me? So he was like, you know what? Listen, just can I have your mom's number? And I'll just talk to her. And I was like, you know what? It's a good idea, actually. Because right. I was like, my mom will never agree to anything like mm-hmm. this. And I'm like, it's perfect because I have to get, get on my train and go home. And so I gave him my mom's number. And by the time I got home, my mom was like, well, listen, I just spoke to this guy. And uh, he really believes that maybe you have a potential to become a model. And I'm like, yeah. And so what do you think about that? And she's like, you know what? I think you should try. He proposed to do a test shoot. Why won't we go to Riga? You do test shoot. Okay. And just see where it goes, you know. Oh, my God. How annoying was the test shoots? <laughs> oh, we had to do so many of them. <gasps> oh my god! So awkward. The so little awkward. baby. Tra- yeah, I know. <laughs> I remember he gave me this like Japanese hat that I had oh, to like no. wear for test shoot. I was wearing like a stripe <laughs> shirt, and I was like, "What am I doing here?" Just like he's like, just jump and smile, and then like be serious. And I was like, you know what? This is. But I actually kind of enjoyed that moment. You did, Thanks. yeah, because I was like, it's very different. Like I'm not used it was to real, right? Yeah, I know. And uh, so we did that, and he sent the pictures to two agencies in New York. Okay. And uh, both were interested, and they actually came to Latvia to see me. Wow. Probably not just because of me. I'm, I'm sure right. they did, like, a scouting trip. Yeah, I'm sure it was very Eastern European-focused modeling, yes. like, girl look at that, at that, you know, time. Yeah. It was early 2000s, right? Yeah. No, you were, like, late 2000s, right? No, I mean, okay, if it, I think I was 2000. Oh, no, early 2000s, yeah. Oh, so we came the same time. Okay. Yeah, the same time, okay. yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so the both agents came uh, from both agencies, and uh, I kind of chose the smallest one because I was super intimidated. Which one? Called MC Square. Huh. Used to be Karen Models. Huh, And then okay, they changed to MC Karen. Square. Okay. Yes. Um, so... Yeah, I just chose smaller one, I think, because I was very shy and I didn't know, you know, what this whole thing is about. I'd rather go with smaller agency and, and like, see how it goes, because the other one was much bigger, called yeah. Woman Model Management. A woman is big. 
yeah and so I was like I don't know if I'm ready for that right. you know so my birthday is in summer I turned 16 and my first trip ever was to New York outside of Latvia yes it's like my first time on a plane too right being 16 mm -hmm. you came to New York I came to New York <laughs> and I was scared God. to leave model apartment because that's where they put me right in right and I was like I can't have go you, on have you street. speak any English by then or I did but you know how it is yeah, like yeah I studied like, in school oh, yeah. but it's mm -hmm. like once you with Americans you're like oh my English is horrible I better don't speak mm -hmm. so I was really shy with talking yeah you know, like it was really funny and then um yeah so I worked remotely so because I was still in I got in school in Latvia and uh so I really wanted to finish my school and then modeling started like I, I was doing kind of okay nothing great like mm -hmm. we talked about your experience about catalogs in New York yeah. that was kind of for me to start doing a bunch of catalogs and maybe that's what they did every agency because they wanted yeah. us to be financially independent to mm -hmm. see if you know we and can I survive. feel like <laughs> it gains experience as well because mm -hmm. catalogs would especially back then used to be a lot of catalog shoots so we would just like constantly shoot I remember every week I was shooting so Bloomingdale's many, you know and it was great because great. I loved it. I'm like yeah. another catalog, ging, ging. Yeah, ging, ging. <laughs> but you know, for me, it took a while to start making my first money. Wow! Because I was always constantly in depth, and because with the they, agency, they kind of keep you. Yeah, yeah, and because of my school in Latvia, I constantly was flying back and forth. So you had so to spend on, money on tickets. Yes. Oh wow! So that was really yeah. So I had a very big. <laughs> <laughs> big hall to fill up yeah. uh, so it took me definitely a couple of years and then by a by the time I was 18 I was like you know what I kind of feel like I want to do this full time okay and um, I was like New York is my city I loved it right away it's just such a great vibe people it are is. so friendly compared mm -hmm. to being back home you know when everyone's cold and still at that time I was still <laughs> born in USSR like you you know so it's do you remember like sorry to interrupt but yeah going back like first or second time going back home after being in new york you i remember going to grocery store and i'm like um like last week to like yeah being polite like hello right like how are you smiling and they look at you like are you okay you need help you want me to call the hospital you know or like what do you want from me yeah. like why are you talking to me so nicely <laughs> like it, it was like such a shock, right? Mm -hmm. Like to, to to go back from, you know, you get used to New York and like, you know, people always mm -hmm. ask you like, how are you, blah, blah. Going back to you now our conscience is, yeah. yeah Sorry to roll, but like no, I remember that true. memory, like, mm -hmm. so you decided to. And I just really like the openness mm -hmm. and I feel like because, you know, I love my country, I love Latvia and everything about it and it has changed so much over the years, of course. But New York had that like drive and I was so young and I was like, you know what, this is my freedom. I can be on my own. I can be, I love modeling uh, and I was like, I want to explore this more. And if I'm here, I want to become successful. I want to be right. really good at this. You want to put your time into it. Yeah. If my mom let me go this far, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to do my best. And as long as I can do it, I will be here and, you know, try everything I can. And so... I quit my school when I was 18 because I was like, okay, I want to save money and then come back to Riga, pay for my own place, buy a computer and then finish my school. So that was my small like beginning goal. And we know it never <laughs> like that. It's like New York or nothing or nowhere, yeah. right? New York or nowhere. Yes. Yeah. So, and then I start spending more time in New York. And when I finally made the money for my first computer, I was like, you know what? I got to stay here more and see how much more I can make. <laughs> I'm not going to stop with the computer, you know. And the beauty of my school in Latvia was that I, they told me I can uh, always come back and like finish whenever I'm ready nice. for it. So that was really good. Yeah. Uh, which I never did. I never finished that school. <laughs> but when I was 25, I finished high school. You know, I did like the like online school and then eventually went for exams in Latvia it was pretty funny at 25 mm -hmm. yeah I never 25. I never studied in school like after eighth grade or something that's crazy <laughs> I know. it's pretty amazing Marina your success <laughs> story is incredible I finished school because you know I was always back in my head I was like right. I, 
I have to finish, like no matter what. It's not like it has any meaning, right. you know, but so I did. Um, and yeah, and so in New York, you know, I, it was right away my favorite city. And in between, because I was still in school in Latvia at that time from 16 to 18, I would travel to like Paris, to London, to right. Tokyo. Doing fashion weeks, doing whatever. Not yet fashion weeks. Not yet. Okay. Not yet, yeah. So fashion weeks, I started around 18. Okay. Um, and but before, yeah. So I get to spend some time in Japan. I uh, didn't work well in Japan at all. You didn't? No. That's a big shocker to me. Yeah, because I have <laughs> big blue eyes, blonde hair. Because you have blonde hair, you have the like face that you know they put in comics books. Yeah. They're whatever the books they have, mm -hmm. comic books, right? Yeah, comic books. They put like this like round faces. Yeah. Big, big eyes. Like, yeah. Wow, why? What agency were you? <laughs> uh, switch models? No, no, no. They're like smaller agency. But I remember I did a couple jobs, like some wedding stuff. And I was like, oh my God, I'm like 50, 16. I'm doing wedding stuff. So interesting. Like I was a bride. I remember we went to that mountain, Fiji mountain, I think, outside oh, wow. of... incredible. It was so beautiful. I <laughs> love Japan. I had like the best time. I was there only three weeks, but it was Just incredible. Three weeks. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and I didn't eat sushi at that time because I was like, what is this? Yeah, and it was weird. it was weird at first, right? When Did you, you eat like a lot some... of soba noodles? No. I ate, you know, those triangle like oh, rice yes. things with like something What are inside. they called? They called something. So I'd always get like tuna or chicken triangle. I, I don't Tun know. <laughs> tuna triangle, I know. I gained so much weight when I was there eating this. Really? Right. Yeah, so much. Oh my God. You know, I gained so much weight when I was in New York because... Again, we would always survive through with pocket money and I had right. sometimes no money and I would be like, okay, what am I going to eat? So I only had enough maybe for pizza slice or pasta and cheese. Pasta and cheese can last for like a week, easy. <laughs> so I would just like eat that and then the agency is like, well, you need to like, what's happening? And I'm like, well, I have no money. <laughs> you know, it's like very yeah. tough times at first, you know? Yes, yes. The start really? point was tough mm -hmm. and modeling house too it's like you you live with a bunch of girls in the same house but i was lucky with the first one because we were a bunch of latvian girls that's nice so, so they're like they like put yeah girls with girls together it's nice so it was nice and they're a little bit older than me and so i wouldn't say more responsible because we all all had a lot of fun you know right. <laughs> but Definitely, it was nice to have that shoulder, you know, mm -hmm. knowing that even though you're by yourself, you're not really by yourself. Did you guys go to castings together and stuff, or not really? Yeah, but they were dark hair, so a lot of castings, it you was know, different. Was, was, we had different clientele. They had more like that edgy, darker look, and did I was the Did you have one. a lot of castings, like with Sasha? Because you guys really look alike. You know, I almost feel like Sasha did, I already looked up to Sasha, you know? She, she was already was like, doing well. I think so. I can't remember. But I remember like her. I was like, oh my God, she's so amazing. Um, but I don't know if that was like early days or a little bit later. Okay. But I definitely knew of her. Yeah. And uh, But it's kind of fun when you start modeling and then the girls you look up to, then you eventually become friends, you right. know? And you're like, oh my God, she's actually more amazing in real life than... Right. <laughs> and it's so cool. When I met Sasha first, I was doing my first Versace show mm -hmm. and I closed the show and Sasha was standing there, and I'm, like, touching my nipples. Oh. And she's, like, you know how Sasha, she's really, like, weird in her mm -hmm. own lane, like, really artsy. And she's, like, why are you touching your nipples? And she's already a huge model, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm, like, I don't know. When I walk on the runway, I'm wearing bikinis. I want my nipples to, like, oh. show. <laughs> and she's, like, okay, weird. And she's, like, do you want me to touch it? Maybe that will, will like, help you. Oh, my God. I'm, like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't know, sorry, it's like so out of content, but like, it was funny. That's how me and Sasha met. At the shows? Yeah. That's so fun. <laughs> shows, yeah. We'll get into the shows. Yeah. We have so many stories about shows. Oh like, my God. that's, I think, where we met most of the girls, you know? Oh, for sure. That's where we all met. Yeah. Hang out. For sure. Because we're always together from mm -hmm. city to city and traveling. That's like fun times, for sure. But, uh, yeah, speaking of, so those couple years uh, when I was still, like, traveling, bouncing a little bit, but I, I always had New York in my mind. I was like, that's the place where I want, that's, like, end goal. And uh, Paris, my first experience was really bad. I didn't like Paris. It was so cold, so right. expensive. Mm -hmm. I was like, it's so hard to even, like manage and it was so many girls because new york it was harder for a lot of girls to get there because of papers to get visa mm -hmm. yeah so 
Paris and Milan are the places where they would usually send all the girls. You and know, Europeans from can go there without a visa yeah. and like everything. Yeah. yeah. So it was. I felt. I found it very, very difficult city to even being seen because there was just so much. You know. Yeah. Um, and London too. I had some like fun times in London. I think it's a great city. And um, over time, Paris actually became one of my favorite cities. I love Paris, but it took it took me a while because it's a hard city to yeah. survive. What about Milan? Milan's cute. Milan's cute. I love people in Milan. <laughs> oh my god, life's so easy. Let's All go right. for lunch. Let's have a glass of wine. You know, it's just right. like very like Always free spirit. Siesta, right? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah, when you finally can have a lunch and you go and every restaurant's closed because right. everyone's on siesta. That was like, <laughs> it's just so funny. I love it though. Um, no, Milan's great. I haven't been there in a minute. Have you? Like really long time ago. I would only go there for shows mm -hmm. or like Jampala's guru, like uh, this, this famous photographer. Yeah. He lives there. He's Italian. I think I went to shoot with him a few times, but mm -hmm. that's it. I don't know. Yeah, totally. I did shoot with him as well there on mm -hmm. Lake Como once. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's kind of like how I started, you know, and uh, New York, I kind of always knew it's my end goal. That's where I want to be. I just really fell in love with the city. And I don't know, was it because uh, it was the first place I ever went to and everyone was just so warm and welcoming? But I like the drive. I like how people work, how organized it is. And like, you feel good. How professional modeling felt like a real job. Yes. Versus like in Europe or like Japan, it kind of felt like a job, but like not really. But like in other places, it almost doesn't feel like a real job. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you get to New York, they like open a bank account for you and they like yeah um, want to make sure that you get social security number right they want to make sure you're doing good they mm -hmm. want to make sure you looking great you know it was like mm -hmm. whereas like in milan or paris or london i feel like they throw you like a cockroach and see who survives <laughs> yeah. kind of yeah <laughs> yes it was like here you are yeah. deal and speaking it. of or, or being organized like in new york i remember I start shooting for this catalog card called uh, Delius, mm -hmm. Delius, Delius, mm -hmm. and um, I don't know if they still exist. I don't <laughs> think so. Not. There's no catalogs anymore. But it was amazing. They loved me there, and I loved them. Like cute clothes, kind of mm -hmm. like for age appropriate, because it was like a younger girl. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember I was always late because I had no money for subway, so I would walk <laughs> from like East Village to um, to like Milk Studios and. Um, I would always be late. Sometimes I was like 45 minutes late. And and I remember that one time the guy, producer, he's like, Ginta, listen, you know, we love you. Mm -hmm. But like, you can't be this late. Like, this is not professional. And he gave me such a like hard lesson. And after that, I was always on time. Never it was late. like a really wake up call. But you know, you're still a kid. So you like learn. But I feel things. like in New York, you can't be late. You can't. No. no. It's like I live in Florida and Miami right now. Mm -hmm. And if we go somewhere or like a, a business meeting or a dinner with friends or whatever it is, everyone is an hour late. It's the same in L.A. In L.A. too, right? In L.A. too. I, I mean, know. maybe not hour, but I notice and people always hear like blame it on traffic. Right. And I'm like, is it really traffic? <laughs> or it's like... But in New York, no one, no one ever late. Everyone is on Everyone's time. always on time. <laughs> like, and I love that. And I think it just like trained me very well. It's just a respect of your time and respect of like other people's time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. And uh, yeah, so, you know, and I think at the beginning of modeling in New York for me was hard because I was not confident enough. You were always very, very, very quiet. Really? That's how you remember me? Yes. Very, very quiet? So because we're never kind of... We never were friends mm -hmm. until maybe four years ago when mm -hmm. I got pregnant with Anna Sophia and we both ended up in LA. But I remember you always like really quiet with your purse. Like, I don't know, you always had like a great purse or something with you and you were always like kind of very reserved. So interesting. Yeah. But you know, I always, sometimes I would think about it and I think because I had so much respect for that industry. Mm -hmm. Because I look up to those people, right. how hard they work, and just like working with Mark Jacobs, being mm -hmm. being there and doing looks with him and seeing in his yeah. creative moments. And it's like, 
I would just always, I'm that kind of person, I guess I always absorb everything right. so much. And like, I need time to like process in a mm-hmm. sense, you know, that I would be just so thankful and grateful to even be there to that I would there, just yeah. like be quiet a lot of times, right. you know, you'll be like, yeah. yeah. So it's very interesting. That's, you know, and I think confidence came over time, but at first I was definitely lacking it. And speaking of the smaller agency, I realized eventually that I need bigger agency. Mm -hmm. I need more help if I want to be, you know, doing uh, better, doing better. Mm -hmm. And so I reached out to the The agency agency who wanted you before. before. And he was like, Ginta, you're calling me? I'm like, how many years after was it? That was like two years after. So like first oh, so pretty two years, soon. pretty soon. So first two years I was with smaller agency. Okay. I did like a bunch of catalogs and like I did some Teen Vogue and things mm-hmm. like that. And I used to work a lot for Pink for Victoria's Secret. But then I think what really helped me and what was like the real start was when I switched to woman. I was really brave of you as yeah like a young girl coming for with someone who like give you the papers and you know brought you to us yeah US. it's true actually yeah knowing what you want and you want to do better it's it's a big deal it's true there was definitely yeah. some drama right no that's what i mean there, mm-hmm. there was contracts and there was visa you know visa and they were probably putting like hope into you as you mm-hmm. you know i mm-hmm. remember like how it was for me when i switched the agency too it was whew, it was like worse than break up with a boyfriend yeah, it's very traumatic, dramatic, because mm-hmm. it's a lot of, like, communication with people, right. so you get really attached, so, mm-hmm. like, if something that happens, you take it very personal, mm-hmm. and, uh, yeah, but it was definitely my best move in my career to go to woman. So, when you went start. to woman, is that when you kind of started to become, like, more famous and, like, doing so better things? So, that's when I started having the kickoff, because okay. they were very smart about, um, I kind of started with Fashion Week, I think I changed for them in, like... August or something like that and then fashion week was September September. and then I started uh, doing shows and the first big thing uh, that actually with a lot of help from them I got Proenza Schuller exclusive that was a big deal very very big deal if you do exclusive so what that means it's uh, uh, you do looks for them you can't do any other show you basically represent them for that season, right. which is awesome. It's a big yeah. honor. And so with that in my pocket, I went to Europe after and uh, started doing other big shows. You know, it was Dolce Gabbana, Prada, Miu Miu. So it just like start bowling like a snowball. Which we're going to talk about in our next yes. episode. Talking of which. Um, thank you for tuning in, everyone. Um, that was Ginta's story. Thank you for sharing. And we're going to continue next week. Yes, thank you so much, (laughs) Marina, for asking all these questions and like (laughs) sharing your story as well. And thank you, guys. See you next time. Bye. (laughs) Bye.